All right, we're gonna go ahead and install our ear liners now. Um, I use a wet tan type of tan. I don't, um, I don't dry tan my hides and I don't send them to the tannery. So this hide has essentially been pickled now. Um, now the way I'm gonna tan it is just to go ahead and add some good quality tanning oil. Um, I have just a big jug of this here that I ordered from Mackenzie's. So I'm gonna just grab myself a little bowl. We're gonna oil this entire hide, but right now we're doing the ear liners. So I just am going to make sure the ears get some good oil on them before we go ahead and install the ear liners. Cause you wanna make sure that all the thin places of the face, especially like the ears, eyelids, nose, all that, you wanna make sure they get really well oiled cause if they don't, they will crack. So this is where your oil really comes in. Um, you know, be generous with it really get it right into the tips of the ears. It really soaks in if you've dried this hide sufficiently. Um, you will see the oil just soak right in. I oil up my cartilage and right into the cracks of the ear. You want it to be nice and slimy. I like to do these separately. I don't do the entire um, cape until I do the ears because then I don't have to deal with the greasy slimy <laughs> cape. So. We're gonna go ahead and install our ear liners now. Um, this is just the way I do it, so just make sure you have your right ear and left ear correct. I have my, this is my right ear, so we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this guy right side out. This is a regular ear, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the other ripped ear to make a video. So we're just gonna turn this inside out, or sorry, right side out and I cut my cartilage right like before the earbud because these have an earbud on them basically. So this is just kind of the easy way to do it. If you're doing it at home, it looks good. It's not show quality, but it's gonna look good. It's gonna have a good turnout. So I just popped that ear liner in there. You can see it already looks pretty good. Looks like the fit is good. I'm gonna make sure I get it right to the tips and that's looking pretty good. So. That'll work for me. Now what I like to do is I just add a little bit of glue in there. I'm just gonna put a gob, and you don't want this all over your cape, trust me. So I just, I'm gonna put a good smear in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. And right away, I'm gonna work that down into the ear, because I don't want it coming out. And then once you've got the outside, I like to come and do the inside as well. Same thing, I'm gonna pull this back. I'm gonna pull the cartilage out of the way. Glue. Crap. Guys, I just dumped my oil all over. Okay, glob of oil, or, whoa, that was a lot of glue. Glob of glue in there. Let that get down in there. So now that I've kind of gotten my ears worked into place, I've got glue right to the tips here. I like to go ahead and just put a few staples in there. Depending how picky you are, you're gonna wanna come back and fill the staple holes after with some epoxy or whatever you wanna fill them with when you're doing your finish work. I don't really worry about it because you really can't see them. So I like to go ahead like this. Just make sure I get my edge nice and tight. And then I just pop a staple in it. A lot of people use carding material. If you haven't turned your ears very well, you should use carding material. <laughs> if you've got your ears turned right to the edge, you don't need it. But for the first few deer that you do for sure, I would highly recommend using carding material. I like to still do some carding um, just for the tips of my ear because no matter how many times I think I get right to the tips, I usually don't. But anyway, that is an ear done. Um, it should stay in place pretty good now. So I went ahead and oiled our cape. It's sitting absorbing that oil. Um, so it'll be easier to stretch once we've let it sit with the oil for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and install the eyes on our mannequin now. So I like to just 
smear a little bit of clay in there. Not a ton, but you know, enough that my eye is gonna stick to it. These are the eyes that we're using here. They are a forward looking deer eye. Um, so now the biggest thing with deer eyes is they have that, um, you won't be able to see it with the camera, but they have a, a flat pupil. And with these guys, I wanna, you wanna make sure that the pupil is level with the ground. It doesn't matter what head position they're in. Um, you just wanna make sure that the pupil's level. And these are directional as well, and they help a little bit with, um, you want that direction to be looking forward. So once you kind of get that set, you're gonna go ahead and push that in place. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my flashlight for a second, and I'll show you, I don't know if you can, if you can see it here, but I'm just gonna have a quick look at that eye. And just adjust it a little bit. I like to first, before I get worried about shaping eyelids, I like to just pack some clay in around the edges of the eye. Don't over pack it, obviously. You know, you want to be able to shape it nicely. So I'm just packing, it's not gonna be pretty, I'm just packing this into that, that um, gap and making sure that it really packs in there nice. And one of the number one mistakes that a lot of people make is they put too much clay. So you really don't need a lot. I like to just, like this is super thin here, um, but that just filled that gap. And once you've got that gap filled, you can come in with an eyebrow and you know, then you get your eye shape a little bit more. There's not a lot that's gonna go in front of the eye here and you want a triangle shape. So you want a high point right here and then you want it to come straight down, curve around nicely and then this eyelid should drop down depending what look you're going for. I'm going for just a straight looking forward alert look on this deer. And now a lot of people will come in here and make this super fancy. They're gonna make all their clay work perfect. We're gonna put a big fat hide over this and it's gonna smear it all out of the way anyway. So you really don't need to worry a lot about that right now. Just worry about getting the right amounts of clay. That would be your most important thing. And I'm just gonna add a lower eyelid now. Come into the tear duct. Again, the tear duct really shouldn't have any in it. Just enough that you can tuck it. And so now we have a lower eyelid. Just feather that in a little bit. And then I like to just put a little bit on where my tear duct is gonna go. And that will just help me close that gap once I tuck my tear duct in. And that's about it. That's how I do my eyes. Um, you'll see when we come back later with the cape and when I do the final precision work. So I'm gonna focus on getting the other eye to look the same and I'll show you guys the end result. Okay, so both of our eyes are done now. Um, as done as they're gonna be, like I say, they're not pretty. That's gonna change. I'm gonna go ahead now and just put some clay on my nose pad down to my upper lip. Again, this is just gonna be a thin layer. Um, it's more so here to just create a cushion for any imperfections because the nose really will show even if there's a thinner spot where you flushed a little more or a thicker spot where you flushed a little bit less. And it also allows you to push that um, little bit of a center indent into the nose when you do some clay here. So I like to just go ahead and add a little bit of a clay pad on the nose. And we're gonna, we're gonna add some clay around the lips as well when we are actually ready to tuck our lips. So this is kind of the last thing I do. I'm ready to mount this deer. Um, if this deer had an ear back or, or even slightly listening ears or anything, I would be doing more with the ear butts, but because this deer is gonna be looking alert and the types of ear liners I have are made to sit looking alert, looking forward, and they're actually contoured to the mannequin. So I don't actually have to do a lot of prep work on this deer. Um, I, I already, oiled the cape, so I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it now. I'll show you guys that. We'll stretch it out just with some pipes I've got. Um, like I say, nothing about this is fancy. This is stuff you can do at home using things that you've got at home. 